Hi, it's Amy and Tim from Go With Less. In today's video, we're gonna break down our experience in Budapest, Hungary. Hopefully, you've already seen our Krakow, Poland because we share all of our tips and food tricks there. Today, we're doing the same thing for Budapest. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, we realized with Budapest is our initial impression wasn't great. So as we arrived at the airport and we came to the city, we, we drove through, we took public transportation and we drove through an industrial area on the way to our hotel and just wasn't what we had seen in Krakow and then we, we thought, well, maybe this isn't going to be all that. Well, the city improved every day we were there and we really loved Budapest in the end. So we were very happy with our, uh, our trip to Budapest. Yes, and now we can't wait to go back. So we're going to be talking about what the special things we did in Budapest and really importantly, what we ate because Budapest gets top award for city with the best, most affordable food. So we can't wait to talk about that. I hope you'll join us. When we first arrived in Budapest, we immediately got on a bus which subsequently transferred to a subway so that was our first experience with public transportation consistently during our trip our utilization of the public transportation was easy and it was very affordable so that's just something to know about getting around in budapest it's really easy to, to take the public transportation system it's widely available and it's cheap yeah they had buses they had trams they had subways we found it very very easy and, uh, and we had to switch hotels in the middle of our stay, which meant that we brought all of our stuff onto the tram. So we really took advantage of, of that system. Yeah. Uh, I wanna talk about our free walking tours. We took three of them. Budapest has a very deep history with uh, Jewish life and specifically with the Holocaust. So we did a general Budapest walking tour that took us up to the castle, which was phenomenal and then we did a dedicated to the Jewish life tour that was a free walking tour and that was also excellent so there is an enormous amount of history to learn and to see and to walk in the footsteps of in Budapest we would highly recommend walking tours period the free walking tours fit our budget so probably the most popular thing to do in Budapest if you're coming there is to get in the baths and unfortunately Amy and I couldn't make that happen so we only had about three days there and coming in, we were very, very tired. And so in order to be in the bass, it cost about roughly $25 a day and it's slightly different depending on exactly what you're gonna do. But that's a good estimate of what it's gonna cost. And so we will definitely do the baths next time, but we missed it this time. So we missed the most iconic thing to do in Budapest, but it's certainly on our radar for next time and uh, something that uh, we would have liked to have done. And that's because we didn't have enough time in the city. So if we're going to pay 25 plus dollars per person, we're not gonna go for 45 minutes. We wanted to like make it worth its while. And so that required a big chunk of the day. The free walking tours were excellent and we wouldn't have cut those out. It's just that we would have added more days to our trip. So we had three days and a travel day. We would have added maybe like a week would probably be a good idea just to enjoy the city and, and soak that up. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna talk about the food halls. So food, it's, it's a big deal in Budapest. They have a really happening food scene. So they have this giant central market hall that is just incredible. So the entire basement, uh, ground floor I should say, is all like fruits and vegetables and meat, so ingredients for sale and it's huge. Upstairs, there's a lot of retail, like selling, I don't know, knickknacks and crafts and clothes and things like that. And the other half is, it's very big, is prepared food. And so we ended up with some unbelievable Hungarian goulash, is how they pronounce goulash. And I didn't think I'd be so up for that in June because it's like a heavy stew thing. It was amazing, unbelievably so delicious. Great food there. Yeah, so at that Central Market Hall. I'm going to be putting the link to the uh, Central Market Hall and the links to the things that we're talking about, the walking tours and things like that in the notes below. So first we did the Central Market Hall, had that great Guyash experience. Then we had this Hold Utsa, U-T-C-A, H-O-L-D space U-T-C-A. It's kind of the same idea where it's a, but much smaller than the Central Market Hall. So purveyors of fruit and vegetables and, and ingredients and things like that with a couple restaurants sprinkled in. And we had probably the best meal of our entire nine weeks. I believe weeks so. Yeah, it there. was an amazing meal. So the best, like the, the highest rated chef in Hungary has like a less expensive concept restaurant in the Hold Utsa. And we each had a three course meal for lunch. The entire thing came out to 37 US dollars and it was 
Del like it was extraordinary. Top notch. Yeah, yeah, so we couldn't, it, it was called Stand 25. We couldn't recommend that highly enough. That was $37. That was completely worth its splurge. Uh, we also saw a, like almost like a food truck. Um, I don't know. Like, what would you call the food truck thing that we saw in the Jewish Quarter? Oh, oh, oh. it's like a food court. It's food trucks, but they're like uh, in a set location. So they're there all the time. There's probably, I don't know, 15 of these yeah. food trucks. Super that are party in a, vibe. Yeah, it was yeah, really like a party vibe that, uh, in this food truck place. And so uh, we would highly recommend, like they, they had a lot of food things happening with a lot of like good buzz and good energy around all of this food. And while we're on food, we're gonna talk about our favorite. Langos! Wow, this stuff is amazing. So it's a fried piece of bread and on top of the bread they put um, uh, sour cream and they put cheddar cheese and all kinds of ingredients, but the classic is sour cream and, and cheddar cheese, and right? Onions. And onions. It doesn't oh, sound like man. it would be that amazing. This thing is a, a uh. divine. So we had it multiple times, and so at the, the first same time place, we had it, because it, it was so right, good. This place called Retro Langosh was our favorite. And uh, I think we went there two times? We went there twice. So as soon so. as we got there, we, we came in with a whole suitcase full of laundry. So we went and did our laundry. And in between, while the dryer is drying, we popped over to get a little bite at this retro langoche. We loved it so oh. much. We went back and we were planning to share one. And it was plenty to share one. After we had our shared one, Tim said, I want another one and I want it all to myself. Yeah. It was so good. Langosh is a reason to go back to Budapest. That's yeah, how good Langosh is. Yeah. This is something like you would think of. It's like in the States they have fried things at a state fair or something like that. And you can only have them once a year. Otherwise, you're going to die of a heart attack. I think this Langosh thing, if we lived in <laughs> Budapest, we would be dying from the Langosh. So uh, this was uh, delicious. Yes. We've talked about the affordability of Budapest, and it was very affordable. It wasn't as affordable as Krakow, so we should stop comparing the cities. That's not fair. But it was extremely uh, affordable. And what we found is some really, really good sit-down restaurants. We went to a Greek restaurant called Mazi, M-A-Z-I, and we thought that was extraordinary yeah. as well. One of our top meals since we've been here also. So. Yeah, and over and over and over in, in Budapest. So, uh, so that was Mazi, and we every time it seemed like we had a sit-down meal in Budapest, it was great, the service was great, the price was great, the food was great. We were really happy about Very that. Very happy, yeah. Something else that we found in Budapest uh, that we saw also in, in Prague was this thing they called a chimney cake, or at least that's what they called it in Budapest. And so I think this is a relatively new concept, but they're claiming it's a traditional chimney cake. But it's a touristy sort of thing, but they are delicious. So it's basically bread that's wrapped around something that's sort of in the shape, shape of a cone. They make the bread. You want to get it fresh and hot, uh, otherwise it's, it's not as good. But this is a delicious treat, and they're pretty much, they seem to be everywhere in, in Budapest as well as in Prague. That's right. And when we asked for one that was hot, he said, I have to make one fresh for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. No problem. We're happy to wait for good food. So we did wait and sat for 20 minutes and got one right hot off the cone. And it kind of was like a cinnamon roll, like a warm cinnamon roll, I guess, is yep. the closest thing it would be. But who's not going to love a warm Here's, cinnamon roll? That's right. Something else, the, the one we got in Budapest came with ice cream. And so we, we would suggest ordered it with we ice ordered cream. it with ice that's cream. That's why it came with and ice so, cream. That's right. And we, <laughs> so at least at the place where we got it, the ice cream was marginal. It wasn't good. It added nothing to the overall Actually, it took experience. Away. And so we would suggest not getting one with Just ice cream. Plain Unless you know it's phenomenal ice cream, I wouldn't get one with ice cream. That's right. So if it's like a place that has good looking gelato or something, we would have got the ice cream with that. This was like not that. This, you could tell this wasn't going to be good ice cream and we messed up with that. That's right. Budapest is really pretty. Our very first impression wasn't fair because we came in through a transportation hub and walked to our hotel from there. That wasn't a fair shot. It is a beautiful city and not only was Gorgeous. it beautiful during the day every street we turned down but it was even maybe more beautiful at night when you see parliament lit up and the all the different monuments and castles and bridges so beautiful so if you do go please make sure that you get out at nighttime one, oh, and before you do, one thing we also noticed is we noticed monu uh, mo monuments to Michael Jackson in two different cities, just in some random walking by sort of a thing. So we didn't see monuments to anybody else except for Michael Jackson. So his spirit is alive and well in Budapest, and that is the first of two monuments. Yep. Something else we wanted to bring up is Budapest seems like it is a 
party place. And so we saw lots of uh, bachelor and bachelorette lots. parties there. Mostly bachelor. So there's like limousines with women out, hanging out <laughs> of the limousines, whooping and hollering. And so that was sort of interesting. We had no expectation that it was going to be there. I'm assuming that's because, number one, it's affordable, and number two, I think the baths may draw that crowd. But uh, we did some see some of the baths. Some of them are very mellow. Some right, of them are very party. But so there's there must be a reason that people come here to party. We're not sure why we weren't there to party, um, but nonetheless, uh, there's this this vibe is going on within Budapest. Uh, something else that um, that we experienced was lots of smoking. This may be the city in in for our entire time that we've been here that has the most amount of smoking. So just walking down the street, it is everywhere. There are a lot of smokers in Budapest, and so. For us, we're, we're not fans of the smoke, and so just having to deal with that was a little bit annoying, but it didn't detract too much from the, the beauty of the place, So, but something to be aware of, lots of smoking. And it's all outside. It is all outside. All outside. That's right, no inside. We felt very safe in Budapest the entire time, and we did spend quite a bit of time walking around at night, and at no point did we ever feel anything other than completely safe. Yeah. We also wanted to mention that uh, we're a little embarrassed by this, but we didn't bother to learn any Hungarian before we showed up in Hungary and uh, we were able to get around just fine with our English and so uh, apologies to Hungarians but uh, it's a very difficult language and so um, but we didn't have any issues at all getting around with, uh, with just English. No and so that's it for Hungary. Next up is Vienna. We hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet there's a button down below that we would appreciate if you subscribed. If you comment we will reply to every one of your comments and we appreciate those and share it. If you know anybody who's going to Budapest we would love if you shared on your social media or with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.